All right, so there's an undisputed way that you can get the most cinematic footage and it's gonna cost you zero dollars. You're gonna have epic looking films for free 99. Free 99. What's going on guys, it's Kofi Aboa back with another video. And today we're talking shooting at golden hour, the settings that you should be using and just for shooting outside in general. Now, generally speaking, the advice you're gonna get to get the best looking film while shooting outdoors is to shoot at golden hour. Now, keep in mind that there's two different types of golden hour. One's gonna be in the morning, just after the sun rises to get a unique look out of your lighting condition. And then there's a commonly used hour before sunset, just before things get dark. Now, golden hour is going to be different for everybody depending on your location. But if you wanna find out not only what time sunrise is, but where the position of the sun is going to be, then use the app called Sunseeker. Now, Sunseeker is an iOS and Android app, and essentially what you can do is find not only when the sun rises and sets, but also where the position of it is as well. Now, what's cool is you have a 3D view on there as well that uses your phone camera, so in real time, you can find out exactly where the sun's going to be at what time on the day. This is great for location scouting, or if you're shooting something like a documentary and you want to know where the sun's going to set at particular times of day, and you can plan your day out on the fly. Now I'm gonna be completely honest about this. Once you've figured out the time and where the position is of the sun, make sure you wake up on time, bro. Now I made the mistake of waking up half an hour too late to catch a part of my sunrise shoot that I had for a documentary, and that sun rose up really quickly. A lot of times you think you have an entire hour or maybe an hour and a half to capture that unique light. What ends up happening is that it rises so quickly that if you're not waking up at four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock to make sure that you're catching it well in advance, you're gonna miss it. Now that happened to me today on the first scene of a dog shoot that I'm working at, but I think we got some pretty good looking stuff. Hey, if your camera man ain't got feet like that, I don't want it. I don't want them. Next, what you want to do is protect your highlights at all cost. Something that separates professional video to something that's a little bit more amateur is having blown out sky and blown out highlights at the sake of trying to expose your subject as best as you can. Now, basically what I do is I use my false colors to make sure that I'm checking my exposure. And when things get too high into the 100 IRE, I start to bring that back. Now, we can't necessarily be perfect every single time and trying to expose for things such as the sun is going to give you overall a really dark image to get a little bit of return. So you might get a little bit of a pass if your sun is a little bit blown out. However, your sky has to be within your dynamic range so that you could expose for or correct it in post. And at the same time, you can keep proper exposure on your subject. Now in camera, I like to adjust my white balance based on my outdoor shooting condition. Now general rule of thumb is to keep things at 55 or 5600 Kelvin, especially for daylight, but when I'm shooting at golden hour, what I tend to do is I start to lean into the warmer tones. Now I'll find myself between 6500 and 7200 on my white balance when I'm dealing with golden hour footage. And the reason why I like to do that is if I'm going to be shooting at golden hour, I'm going to start leaning into those golden and yellow and orange tones anyways. Now to each their own, you could use 5500 or 5600 if you want to, but for me personally, that's something I lean into, especially if if I know what my final image is gonna look like. All right, so a technique that a lot of cinematographers use for their subjects is backlighting. And, and basically what it is, is putting your subject between the camera and the light source, which is gonna be the sun. Kind of like this. Now this technique has two benefits. Number one, you're gonna prevent blowing out your subject. If you're shooting with the sun and you're putting yourself between your light source and your subject, if you're shooting on the wrong side, you're gonna have a lot of blown out images, you're gonna have a lot of unflattering footage and it's overall just not going to look good. And on top of that, you could actually create a silhouette look if that's what you're going for. But that brings me on to my next tip, which is using a five in one reflector. Now, if you're somebody that's not looking for an over silhouetted look, using something like a five in one, especially on the bounce side, is going to help you give a little bit more exposure if the sun's behind your subject. Now, in a lot of the work I've been doing this year, I've been working with talent that honestly looks just like I do and has darker skin tones. Now, when I'm exposing for my highlights, I do have darker shadows. And what ends up happening is if you play too far into this, a lot of your subjects are gonna look like characters that haven't been unlocked yet. Now, using something like a five in one reflector helps give you back some of that exposure by actually bouncing the sunlight back into your subject. Now, it's not gonna be anything that's crazy like having a 600 watt light, but it's gonna give you a little bit of return that you can use in order to expose properly. 
Now this year I've been working on a lot of documentary work and one setting that I haven't been using a lot is slow motion. But if you're somebody that's shooting at golden hour, if you're a slow motion nerd, this is your time to shine. When you're working with golden hour footage, what ends up happening is you're gonna have a very bright environment. Now, as you guys know, as you go into higher and higher frame rates, your image is going to be a little bit underexposed because you're using higher shutter speeds. And as we get higher and higher in different frame rates, your exposure is gonna get darker and darker as you go up in shutter speed. Now, when you're working with an outdoor environment, which is generally gonna be what golden hour is, you have a little bit of an advantage here because the environment is so bright and you're actually underexposing your image naturally with your frame rate, you're to be able to find a happy median for your picture profile without having to use as much neutral density or adjusting other settings to get the proper exposure. And my favorite part about golden hour footage is that the post-production and the color grading process is made really easy. Now I'm on this kick now where I wanna have my image looking as good as it can right out of camera because when I go into DaVinci Resolve and I start pushing and pulling colors, I'm actually starting from a good position that I did while I was shooting and not relying on things like doing it in post. Golden hour footage is a great way to get really good light and very interesting colors and you can start to make a really stylistic look for your shooting style by also picking the time of day and adjusting your post production accordingly. That being said, I hope you guys learned something and took something away from this video that you can take into your everyday filmmaking, whether you're shooting commercials, documentary, or maybe you just want that vlog to look that much better. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Piece. And if you think that I shot a golden hour for this golden hour video by accident, you're sorely mistaken. I wonder how many times this flare got in and out of this shot.